Well, the debate may have reset the race a bit. Here to talk about where things stand now is Am Ramaswamy's growing popularity as campaign reporter from The Hill, Caroline Vakil. Caroline, you and I have spoken about the race before in the past, and I have to ask you, it seems as though even though we're talking about Vivek's rise, we can't help but notice DeSantis kind of fading into the background. I want to get into Wednesday's GOP debate. Ramaswamy, who just a few months ago was almost entirely anonymous to much of the public, is now rising in the GOP presidential polls. Why does this matter? Well, it's a great question. I mean, as you've noted, Vivek Ramaswamy was, you know, virtually unheard of when he launched his campaign in February. Fast forward to Wednesday night, and you're not going to be able to talk about the debate without talking about Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, why it matters is that these presidential debates offer Americans, and specifically Republican primary voters in this case, their first opportunity to really get to see these candidates up on stage who are going to contrast themselves. Um, and with these kind of opportunities, it gives a candidate like Vivek Ramaswamy the opportunity to get a lot of eyeballs on him. And he was certainly the focus of several different tangles with more experienced politicians, like former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, former Vice President Pence. And and, you know, because they have been, you know, having these tangles with him, uh, it does suggest that these campaigns are starting to take him more seriously, um, you know, back on the backdrop of some of these national polls showing that he has more momentum in the race right now. Caroline, his performance also seemed to have earned him mixed reviews. Some people thought the uh, grin was a bit too cheeky and that he was too smooth. Some found him completely obnoxious, but most agree he won the lion's share of attention that night. Would you agree? Agree with that? Definitely. I mean, the the opinion out there there is only twofold. You either loved him or you hated him, and that was certainly true amongst all of the chatter online and in the spin room afterward. Um, but if you're, you know, essentially a formerly little known candidate running for president. Having that attention on you in general isn't going to necessarily be a negative. And for Vivek Ramaswamy, you know, his campaign has said he raised $450,000 on Wednesday night after the debate. His campaign told me that he raised $600,000 uh, $600, on Thursday, the day after the debate. And so you can tell that that buzz is actually generating some financial momentum for him as well. The question becomes, where does he go with that momentum and can he sustain it into this next second debate in September? Well, if he continues to keep his allegiance with the former president intact, it seems he can go far. He called former President Trump, quote, the best president of the 21st century and repeatedly defended him. Do you think his strategy in doing so is what's helping him grow in popularity and raise money? Definitely. I think that, you know, for these candidates, as, as has been said before, this Republican Party is shifting into sort of two different parties. Those who are either largely loyal to Trump or are open to voting for him again, and those who want an alternative. And these candidates are trying to find a way to be able to mingle with both. Vivek Ramaswamy is obviously seen as sort of a likable candidate for, you know, more Trump loyal aligned, you know, uh, voters or those who are open to voting for him again. The question becomes, can he expand that coalition? Some Republican strategists have suggested say he can, and he can maybe even court voters who typically may have been outside of the Republican base in, in previous presidential cycles. Caroline, I've got less than 30 seconds, but I've got one more question for you. Speaking of Mr. Trump, he has now been charged in four criminal cases. He still holds a commanding lead, but do you think these indictments will have any negative long-term consequences for his campaign? So far from what we've seen from the polls, the indictments show that, you know, they haven't toppled him in terms of being the front runner on the primary. Now, you know, as this these trials get underway, um, things may possibly change. If there is an acquittal or a conviction, that's also going to change the calculus here. But at this point, you know, with the indictments and the fact that Trump is still fundraising off of, you know, even his mugshot, as you've noted, uh, seems to suggest right now that he's he doesn't have any he doesn't see any issues in the long run right now. Caroline Vakil from the Hill, once again, thank you for joining us and helping us to break it all down. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.